Alright guys, we're going to go over your final exam. This is your review. So we're going to be reviewing chapter 27 first, then 28, and then the comprehensive portion. So let's start. If you print off your review, this will make it go a lot easier as we go through this. Alright, so chapter 27. We have volume percentages of the following. You need to know the following percentages. We have the intracellular fluid makes up two-thirds of all of your fluids. So you need to know two-thirds. Well, what's left then? The extracellular fluid is the other one-third. However, the extracellular fluid can be divided into blood plasma and interstitial fluid. 20% is blood plasma and 80% is in interstitial fluid. So these are percentages that you need to know. You also need to know that water, guys, is the largest component of the human body. We also need to define, you need to define dehydration. Dehydration is water loss is greater than water gain. So you're losing water faster than you're taking it in, so you become dehydrated. That should be a given. We should not miss that question. Now, we're going to also look at the role of the following hormones to the fluid and electrolyte levels that were found in Chapter 27. We have the antidiuretic hormone, or ADH. This is the major hormone that regulates water loss, and it does this by promoting water reabsorption at the kidneys. Aldosterone promotes the kidneys to reabsorb um, sodium, Na2+. Now, with the reabsorption of sodium, it causes water to follow. Now, PTH, calcitrol, and calcitonin, these are regulators of calcium in the blood. So you need to know that all of these regulate calcium. Function of electrolytes. Guys, electrolytes function as a number of things. They serve as cofactors. They're going to help with enzymes. They help maintain your acid-base balance. They also help you control um, osmosis between the compartments of interstitial and, and um, like the cytoplasm and things like that. And they also can help carry electrical currents. So these are all functions that electrolytes can perform. Now, what's the most abundant mineral in the body? The most abundant mineral in the body is calcium. Okay, so that's going to be the one that you need to remember. It's calcium. Next one, what three mechanisms control the H plus levels in the body? Now, H plus, guys, those are the hydrogen ions. This is going to mean what helps regulate pH. Well, guys, there's buffer systems, you excelling carbon dioxide, and also excretion by the kidneys. These buffer systems use proteins, phosphates, carbonic acid, and bicarbonate levels to help maintain. So you need to know these kind of two areas. There's two separate questions on your exam. Now, you also need to know the cause of the following. Um, we see here acidosis, guys, is a pH below 7.35. So we have below 7.35. Alkalosis is a pH above 7.45. Now, metabolic alkalosis, the most common cause is excessive vomiting. Respiratory acidosis is inadequate exhalation of carbon dioxide, or what we call hypoventilation. This could be caused by things like asthma, but especially like emphysema. Respiratory alkalosis is the opposite, and it's caused by hyperventilation. You're ventilating too much. You need to know the location of the thirst center in the brain, guys. This is found in the hypothalamus. Remember, the hypothalamus helps regulate lots of different areas, and thirst is one of them. And last for chapter 27, what's the main protein buffer in buzz, blood plasma? This is albumin. Now in your notes it talks about the major role of hemoglobin in this. Hemoglobin is the next one, but albumin is the biggest protein buffer. And we didn't specifically talk about that in the notes, but I'm giving it to you here. It's also found in your textbook. So the main protein buffer in blood plasma is albumin. All right, so now let's look at chapter 28. You need to know the structure or function of the following. The seminiferous tubules, these are located in the testes, and this is the site of sperm production. The epididymis in the male is the site where sperm is going to mature. The penis is composed of three cylindrical masses of erectile tissue, and it's surrounded by fibrous tissue. 
In females, we have the ovaries. These are the female gonads that produce the secondary oocytes. However, ovaries also release estrogen and progesterone. The uterine tubes, um, these connect the ovaries to the uterus. This is also the site of fertilization. Remember that the uterine tubes can also be known as the fallopian tubes or the oviducts. The cervix is part of the uterus that opens into the vagina. And these are the main structures you're going to need to know for your exam. Now let's look at the site of production and function of the following hormones. So first is testosterone. Guys, testosterone is secreted by the lignin cells, okay, in the testes. Remember, testosterone is important for sperm production, but it's also going to be important for the secondary sex characteristics in males. Luteinizing hormone, or LH. In males, it stimulates lignin cells to secrete testosterone. In females, however, it trigger, triggers ovulation. So know what, what the LH hormone does in both males and females. Pro progesterone is found in females, and this is secreted by the corpus luteum after ovulation. However, progesterone levels um, need to drop in order for labor to take place. Labor cannot take place until this hormone's effects are diminished. So progesterone levels drop right before labor. The last hormone you need to really know here in this section is inhibin. Inhibit, inhibin inhibits the release of FSH from the pituitary gland. So it's going to stop it and slow it down. All right, so there's some definitions you also need to know for this section. The menarche is a first menses. A zygote is a diploid fertilized ovum. This is a fertilized egg. It's a result of the fusion of the male and female gamete, so the fusion of an egg and a sperm. O Ogonia is the cells that give rise to primary oocytes. So these are kind of like the egg stem cells. The umbilical cord is the connection between the placenta and the embryo. It offers nu nutrients um, to the embryo and also takes the waste away back to the mother. So it's the connection between the embryo and the mother. Continuing with chapter 28, you need to know examples of sexually transmitted diseases. Some examples are syphilis, gonorrhea, genital herpes, and genital warts. Of course, these are not the only ones. Okay that um, are sexually transmitted diseases, but these are the ones that will be on your exam. You also need to know the phases in female reproductive cycle, like the proliferative and pre-ovulatory. Proliferative is the uterine phase where it thickens um, of the endometrium. It will double. The reason it does this is it's preparing for potential implantation of a fertilized egg. Pre-ovulatory is the ovarian phase between the end of menstruation and the beginning of ovulation. Okay, these two actually take place at the same time. However, one's taking place at the uterus level, the other at the ovary. Okay, so that was a quick covering of chapter 27 and 28. Now let's look at the comprehensive portion of your exam. There is going to be a matching check section that has matching the organ systems to its structures. These are going to be pictures. So, of course, if the picture contains mostly, you know, things like the lungs, the bronchi, the throat, the nose, that's going to be the respiratory system. If it has the kidneys, the ureters, the urethra, the bladder, that's the urinary system. So, these should be really easy. These should be give me points on your exam. There's also going to be a matching of the organ system to its basic function. So, review the basic function of, like, the cardiovascular system the urinary system, the reproductive system, but these are going to just be their basic functions. Again, this section should be super easy and you should be able to gain points easily on this. Now, the next section you need to be know specific about certain structures. So the thalamus, guys, the function is it serves as the majority or the major relay station in the brain. Remember, this is the area where that acts as the switchboard, which connects the lower um, parts of the brain and spinal cord up to the higher parts of the brain. 
Also the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus has the area that controls hunger, thirst, body temperature, blood calcium concentration, and so on. It's going to be your area of how, that has the basis of homeostasis. The anterior pituitary. This is the gland that is directly controlled by hormones produced by the hypothalamus. Remember the anterior pituitary produces and releases lots of different hormones. All right, specifically when we're talking about certain receptors of the nerves, the cones in the eye are specific. These are sensory receptors used to detect light rays under bright light conditions. This is going to help you have sharpness of your vision as well as your color vision. Nociceptors are sensory receptors that respond to stimuli, stimuli resulting from physical or chemical damage to tissue. These are also known as pain receptors. So nociceptors are also known as pain receptors. The alveoli, this is going to be part of the lungs. This is the primary place for gas exchange. Okay, this is where they are um, wrapped around with blood vessels and it allows oxygen and carbon dioxide to exchange back and forth from the blood. The liver, guys, the liver is an accessory organ of the uh, digestive system and it produces a fluid that functions in emulsifying dietary fat. Now guys, remember the liver produces this fluid that we know as bile. However, the gallbladder stores it. So please don't get those confused. The liver is what actually makes it. You also need to know the structure of the following. You need to know the brain stem is composed of the medulla, the pons, and the midbrain. It has three portions to it. Also, the stomach, guys, has the rugae. This is, allows for greater distension for food storage. It allows your stomach to expand. Remember that the bladder also has the same structure to allow for expansion. Now, on the heart, you need to know the chambers of the heart and which ones are oxygenated and deoxygenated when it blood enters them. Oxygenated blood guys come or oxygenated areas of the heart are the left side of the heart, the left atria and the left ventricle, because they're receiving blood back from the lungs, which they've collected oxygen. Deoxygenated blood is going to enter the right side of the heart, the right atria and the left ventricle, because it's coming back from the body where it's dropped off its oxygen, and then it's going to go to the lungs after this portion. Which cells are invaded by HIV? These are your helper T cells. Remember the helper T cells are key in the immune system and so if they are not doing their job, the immune system starts to be deficient. You also don't need to know the direction of diffusion of gases. Lungs to blood, we're going to see oxygen goes into the blood and carbon dioxide is out of the blood. This allows you then to breathe out carbon dioxide. However, at the tissue level, oxygen is going to leave the blood to go to the tissues and it's going to pick up carbon dioxide to carry back to the lungs. So make sure that you know how oxygen and carbon dioxide are moving, whether we're going from the lungs to the blood or from the blood to tissue. You need to know the role of the following hormones. Okay, This is the last little bit that's on your review. Growth hormone stimulates general body growth. Again, this should be a given. You should not miss this question. <clears throat> Adrenocorticotropic hormone stimulates the adrenal cortex to secrete cortisol. This is important in the stress response. Releasing cortisol is the stress hormone. Luteinizing hormone. This stimulates the gonads to secrete progesterone if it's a female and or testosterone if it's a male. So guys, when we look at this, we've already talked about LH hormone, but here it is again. Now, oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone, we've already talked about antidiuretic, but guys, what I want you to know about these two is these are the two hormones that are secreted by the posterior pituitary gland. They're secreted by the posterior. Calcitonin opposes the effects of parathyroid hormone. Remember though that calcitonin and parathyroid hormone are both important in calcium levels. But these are opposites. Calcitonin does the opposite of parathyroid hormone. Insulin. Insulin is, re is released in response to increases in blood glucose level. Remember this is going to be released by the pancreas. 
Now, one that I forgot to put on your review that you need to know as well is glucagon. This is the opposite of insulin. It's released in response to a decrease in blood glucose levels. So know that they are opposites. Now guys, this is your review. I know I went over it very quickly, but guys, if you will study this, there is no reason why you should not do well on your final exam. Please be prepared for your final exam. Go to the appropriate time. Um, I will list that here in the area that you can access this video um, to remind you when your test is. Make sure you bring a pencil and a Scantron because you're going to be using a Scantron. The whole test, however, is multiple choice. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. And please don't wait to the last minute to study for this final. Have a good day.